From the Denver Broncos Media Center, welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight as we break down another Broncos loss, unfortunately, to the Baltimore Ravens. 10 to 9. Now, Steve Atwater joining me in studio. What up, Pat? What up, Mario? It was good to see you, man. It's good to have you here. So I, I guess the way we look at this, right, is that they were nine and a half point underdogs. And, and certainly you're disappointed with the way it happened. Um, but again, a lot of what the Broncos have done this year showed up. You had elite defensive moments. It was really nice to see them get some pressure. I thought they did a good job against the run overall against uh, the Ravens. Defensively, you had two inside linebackers with 17 tackles. Real. My goodness. Uh, so they, a lot of things to point out there on the defense that you like. Two interceptions on the offensive side. Russell Wilson had 77% completion rate. Uh, the offense, I thought, had some really efficient moments. But again, it's just it's just you're not scoring enough points, and you can't you can't win in the NFL. This was a defensive battle. Sometimes those are going to happen, but the Broncos have had too many of those to rely on the defense to hold them all the way through. Yeah, and we knew at the start of the season uh, we thought that we were going to have a great defense, and we have that, uh, but we didn't know they were going to play this well. Uh, obviously, they don't feel great because we still uh, have only won three ball games, so they feel like they haven't played uh, well enough, but. They play well enough for us to have a much better record than we have right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, uh, and I understand it's a team game, and you know, as as a guy, uh, if I were a player, I would never say this, but the offense really, uh, they really haven't uh, held up their end of it, and I'm sure they feel that same way. They feel terrible about it, um, but it's the same story every every week. It just it feels like the same same theme is going to play out uh, near the end of the game, and. Uh, you know, I got to say, I, I didn't feel super confident, uh, you know, watching the game that even when we were up, uh, I was like, oh, man, it just seems like near the end of the game, something's going to happen and uh, and it's going to get away from us. And, and it happened again. And, uh, and I don't like having that feeling about my team. man. I, I want us to feel I want to feel like, hey, we're going to win this game and have the confidence that we're going to do it. But, um, you know, I, I thought the guys, they had some some moments where they were on the same page. Guys play well, but it, it just wasn't enough. And this has been a recurring theme uh, all throughout the year. One of the things you brought up last week when we had you in is you talked about the intensity and you wanted to see that ratcheted up. I thought they, they did a good job with that. I thought the intensity was there. Uh, even, you know, play design and guys executing. Uh, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was good. Uh, but it just wasn't enough. It wasn't, wasn't consistent enough. We didn't have enough plays where our offensive linemen, Dominated, you know they dominated on on a lot of plays, but it, it wasn't enough on, on the plays where they needed it. We didn't dominate, you know. We had guys breaking through the line of scrimmage. Uh, Calais Campbell, the other defensive lineman, they you know they 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 play well too, and we know they have they have a good defense. I mean, a lot of people, of course, were, the theme up to the ga- up to the game, people were saying, "Oh, this defense, Baltimore defense, isn't good." They have a good defense. They got some playmakers on that defense. Uh, you know, Kyle Hamilton uh, played 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 really well. I thought they know he got hurt there. Uh, they got two great corners, um, two great inside linebackers, inside linebackers. Roquan and Patrick. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, they 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 have a squad. So it's not like we you know we uh we didn't score points against a, a really good good team, but we got to score points. If we plan on winning ball games. Yeah, you brought up a really good point there, and I think when we get to the end of the season and we look back, I think one of the things that's going to be a resounding observation is. They didn't play consistently enough for 60 minutes. And and this game might perfectly encapsulate that, right? Because yeah. you did have a six-point lead in the final three minutes, and you, and you just couldn't hold on long enough to hold on to it. So uh, it, it's perfectly identified there at the end of the game, but I think if we go back, we can find stretches where they just didn't put together enough, whether it's intensity or consistent play. Yeah. It just didn't happen. Yep, 100%. And... That's what you got to have to to win uh, in this league. Uh, and again, a lot of teams uh, aren't necessarily doing great. A lot of teams are kind of right there in the middle. And uh, you know, and the Ravens are one of those teams. You know, they're they're not uh, you know undefeated. They've 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 lost more than two or three games. And quite a few teams are in there. We're not in that situation. But that shows there's a lot of parity in the league. But uh, when, when you have an opportunity to win these games, you got to take advantage of them when you have them because uh, you just never know. We, we got the Chiefs coming in next week. It's going to be a tough ball game. And uh, we, we got we to gotta 
Forget about this, though. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about it. We're going to uh, go through uh, all the things that went right and what went wrong and see how we can correct it. But at the end of the day, they got to put it out of their minds. they got to be ready for the Chiefs coming up next week. Well, I mean, that's exactly right. And that's, that's I guess, the, the design of the NFL, right, is is there's only so many times. What you usually, usually say, 24 hours, right? You yeah. get 24 hours to really think about that game, and you got to move on as quickly as possible. And and so by the time we're talking to players later in the week, they, I mean, you ask them about the previous week, they're like, I mean, yeah, we're, yeah we're that team. happened, but yeah. we're talking talking about the Chiefs yeah, now. We're looking at Chiefs film now. Yeah. You know, we don't even hardly remember what happened in the last game. Uh, what, what series was that? <laughs> right. Um, but, but, that's, that's, but that's that's the mindset that you have to have to be a professional athlete, especially in the NFL. And um, I, I'm certainly with you. I know that the season didn't go the way anybody wanted it to. But again, one of the things you got to love about the NFL is, is you can change a little bit of the narrative about your team almost the very next week. Now, the Broncos aren't going to make the postseason. They're already guaranteed a losing record this year. Those are certainly disappointments, and, and they'll get a chance to feel that at the end of the year. But again, if they would have found a way even to hold on and beat the Ravens, a game they were nine and a half point underdogs, which is the, one of the reasons I opened that up, is it's amazing how much that would be like, well, it wasn't good enough, but boy, they held the Ravens to three points or whatever they ended up doing, and that is impressive by itself. And then you would have said, what can that do as far as momentum building for a possibility of snapping a streak against Kansas City? Because that is, I mean, for all the people that have, have sort of maybe checked out or been a little bit down about the team, there's a 13-game winning streak. I believe it's 13 games. It might even be more at this point, but it feels like more. Uh, that the Broncos would like to snap that thing to to help organizationally. Well, game. That's right. Yeah. Oh, help, help 100%. build out of this thing because uh, you you don't want that hanging on you even into next year again. Yeah, and it's crazy because normally in the division the games are tight regardless of you know who's the got the better team. You know what the, what the coach's situation is. Uh, you know all that. In you normally in division, no team just has a dominance over another team. Uh, now we did back in the day, every, you know, every now and then. Your but, team, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's not the norm, though. You know, uh, normally the divisional games are super close games. We played the Chiefs, Chiefs in close games the last couple of years where we've been close. And I hope we can get over the hump this week. Uh, and I don't know, it'll be a huge shot in the arm for the guys and for Broncos country. Yeah, I mean, it seems like. Again, looking at the intensity, the the team has not quit. So all those those are markers of team that that really are out there playing for each other. They're playing for opportunities to to improve the culture of the team. They just don't really know how to close. And and that I think was abundantly clear at the end of that game against Baltimore. Is it just felt like the weight and momentum of the season? Maybe at that yeah. point. And I know, again, you guys are are so good at compartmentalizing. Players are so good at compartmentalizing the moment yeah. and being in the moment. But again, you, you can't help it if the weight of the season, and oh, here we go again, as a team starts to find some momentum and footing, and then you, it just sort of cascades on you. Yeah, you wonder if the players feel that somewhat too, you know, as, as we get closer to the end of the game and like, oh, man, we haven't won one. You know, do they have that feeling that, hey, things aren't going to go right? Uh we got to somehow get that turned around, and the only way you're going to do that is is by winning, by executing, and by uh, again, eleven men on the field, just you know, leaving 110 percent of it on, out there on the field. Uh, no so, other way. So certainly frustration, right? But again, as we play these games out, the Broncos are are trying to find guys that they're going to be able to utilize as a big part of the plan going next year. I want to highlight two guys that I thought had one, and I know you know one of them that I'm going to highlight, and that is Greg Dulcich, yes. who the Broncos uh, opted to use him a little bit more like a wide receiver. Nathaniel Hackett said that after the game, so they tried to use him a little bit more of a wide, rece wide receiver, which is something that I said I'd like to see at some point this year, and we saw some dividends there. So uh, him and Damari Mathis, yeah. two young guys that I think are really going to be big-time players for the Broncos going forward. Yeah, I agree with you on both of those guys. Uh, Greg Dulcich, man, he's, he's his hands are like gold. He's, he's catching everything thrown his way. Uh, great run after the catch. I still want to see him improve some in the blocking, um, but he, he's doing sufficient. He, he's sticking his head in there. He's giving a great effort, and I think he'll get better as time goes on. Uh, and Damari Mathis... Uh, early on in the year, a lot of people were scratching their heads like, oh, man, he's got those uh, um, the uh, pass interference calls. 
but he's been been really solid. He's uh, you know held held his side down. Uh, teams aren't trying him as much here lately, and uh, he, he's been doing a good job. Been being a physical cornerback as well, not not just a guy that's covering, but he's also uh, coming up in the run game and making plays. So uh, I'm, I'm super bullish on him as well. Yeah, and even in the pass rush, you got Baron Browning, Jonathan Cooper, who you almost forget are second year players at this point. Uh, both guys making big time plays. So again, frustration. This team certainly le- needs to learn how to win games close games out or if nothing else just play consistently as you can for 60 minutes again the other team gets paid too right yeah. but play as consistently yeah. as you can for 60 minutes you can't forget about uh Josie Jewel and Alex Singleton well no and I, I wasn't I was talking about the, the young guys oh, like, yeah. like like yeah. specifically guys that are absolutely on this roster next year listen I, Josie Jewel's got another year in his contract Alex Singleton has played well enough this year that I absolutely want to bring him back because yeah. he not only plays well when you need him to play major snaps on the defensive side of the ball, but he's a good special teams player too. Yeah. And th- those Absolutely. players are so unbelievably valuable. So uh, again, Joe's Jules kind of a glue guy. I think Alex Singleton's a little bit in that conversation. And, and Hey, if you can have those guys, you get back Jonas Griffith at some point, yep. you're going to have a pretty nice little setup there at inside linebacker. I think one of the things you think about in the off season is how many of these positions can we just set and forget mm-hmm. and not spend time on? Well, if Damari Mathis, Pat Sertan and Ronald Darby can be your starting three cornerbacks. We'll be good. Yeah. That's a great start. And of course you got K1 Williams here as well too. But I'm just saying like, if you have a room of those four guys, that is an unbelievable start. Your safeties look like they're going to probably be set when Caden Stearns comes back. Right. And then you're just sort of talking about, okay, what can we do to bolster the, because the defense is already good. Imagine if you can more or less run it back with that and then just find ways to improve the offense. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. That that, that sounds like a plan. Uh, I still want to uh, get some more strength along that interior defensive line. Yeah. Uh, you know, just you know, you get a little bit of push on on in, in pass rush situations. I think run wise, hey, we did pretty pretty decent job. Uh, you know, stopping the run this past week, and I was hoping we get back uh, on that uh, because we've give, given up a couple of hundred yard rushers. Uh, the last uh, couple of weeks, so uh, only 103 this week, though. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying not one individual guy having 100. That's right. They yeah. were better, and that this is the team. If you're, I mean, they're number two in the NFL for a reason. Lamar Jackson going down certainly hurt, but Huntley he he scrambles around. Yeah, he so. scrambled around, and uh, you know we we kind of held him in check there. Even though they got 10 points, 10 points is really nothing in the NFL. That goes to show that our offense really's got to they got to pick it up, man. We got got to pick it up. All right, Steve. Thank you, man. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. For Steve Outwater, I'm Ryan Edwards. Thanks for watching Broncos Country Tonight. Denver's going to win it. You can stand up and salute in Denver, but you've got the world champions that live in your town.